Ison Water Shield is a robust, self-adhering roof underlayment that's widely used in the building industry and is even required by code in some regions and jurisdictions to be installed at the eaves to prevent the damaging effects of ice buildups, which we refer to as ice dams or ice damming. But does it actually prevent ice dam formation? In this video, we're talking about the role of ice and water shield, ice dam prevention, and some cautionary advice when installing it on your entire roof assembly. Let's get into it. Ice and water shield, peel and sticks, and self-adhered underlayments are all basically synonymous for all intents and purposes. We're talking about an underlayment that has a sticky adhesive backing that's adhered to the sheathing to prevent water from finding a path underneath the laps, and overall it's a highly effective system at resisting bulk water compared to mechanically fastened underlayments that use plastic cap nails. Ice and Water Shield is closely associated with the brand name Grace Ice and Water Shield from GCP, but there are countless other Ice and Water Shield products on the market that utilize very similar compositions of SBS rubberized asphalt. Now, when we're talking about using ice and water shield as a preventative measure against the effects of ice dams, we need to understand that ice and water shield itself does not prevent ice dam formation. Simply put, ice dams form when there's uneven snow melt on the surface of the roof. How does this happen? Well, snow is actually a really good insulator at R1 to R2 per inch. If you've got 12 inches of snow on your roof, you basically have an additional R12 to R24 on the surface. And so any heat loss from the building that's coupled to the sheathing is gonna end up warming up the bottom layer of snow, causing it to melt. The water trickles down the surface of the roof covering and refreezes at the eaves, since the eaves are outside of the building envelope, so they stay much colder and are closer to exterior conditions. And this process repeats until we have ice dams. As the buildup of ice and snow gets larger, the water can refreeze underneath the laps of a mechanically attached underlayment like tar paper or roofing felt, and when the ice melts, we get water damage and moisture issues. This is why in many regions, it's code to have an ice and water shield product installed at the eaves. So how do we actually prevent ice dams? It's actually more simple than you might think. We need to vent the roof sheathing. This is the primary reason why vented roofs are used in cold climates, not necessarily just to remove interior moisture, but to flush the heat loss from the building with cold exterior air before it has a chance to accumulate and warm up the sheathing to cause the initial snow melt. We also need to insulate and do a good job of air sealing the ceiling plane, but venting is the key to ice dam prevention. Well, what if you have a conditioned, unvented attic or vaulted ceiling? You can install a vented over roof over the conditioned roof, a strategy that was pioneered by Joe Stebrick from Building Science Corporation. 2x4s or 2x6s can be fastened through the roof assembly into the rafters and sheathed with an additional layer of plywood or OSB to provide the substrate for the roofing underlayment and the roof covering. Then we provide continuous ventilation at the bottom near the fascia and at the top of the ridge, and there you have a really smart method of ice dam prevention for conditioned roofs. If you have a metal roof, you can simply install the metal roof on 2 by 4 strips or sleepers to provide a vented space. Now, one of the traits of ice and water shield products that are composed of rubberized asphalt is that they happen to be pretty effective vapor barriers, and we can run into some serious problems if this product is installed over the entire roof in a conditioned assembly. Warm, moisture-laden interior air diffuses into the attic and is stored in the sheathing if it can't dry through that underlayment. Initially, this leads to an increased moisture content in the sheathing, but eventually we start to see condensation if we don't have exterior insulation installed outboard, and if we don't have a means of of interior moisture removal. So if you're going to use this stuff on a conditioned roof, you need to make sure that you have enough rigid insulation installed outboard relative to your climate zone to keep the sheathing warm and to prevent condensation. This practice isn't as common anymore in new construction, but it's very common in remodels and re-roofing projects in which the roofer or the client wants to improve the roof's ability to resist water. Another thing to keep in mind, even if you are providing rigid insulation outboard, a traditional ice and water shield product will trap moisture in that second layer of sheathing, and so if you do happen to have a leak or if there's excess construction moisture, that water has no ability to dry out of the assembly. Now, why would I still recommend using ice and water shield or some variation of it? Well, it's a fantastic water and air control layer. Self-adhering products bond to the sheathing or the substrate that they're installed on instead of being mechanically fastened. This is actually a really big deal since both water and air can travel freely between the laps. 
Now, if you're concerned about moisture not being able to dry through that underlayment, there are now vapor permeable ice and water shield products on the market that are fantastic substitutes for a traditional ice and water shield, in which basically the synthetic self-adhering weather barrier products that are used for walls were modified and toughened for roofing applications. Why else would you want to use an ice and water shield product? If you have a metal roof, you're going to have a highly conductive surface that will heat up the components immediately below it. Tar paper and felt are not going to be the best underlayments to specify here since they aren't very resistant to high temperatures and even your standard synthetic underlayments can deteriorate quite a bit when exposed to heat. The metal roof is essentially scorching the surface of that underlayment and so we need to use an underlayment that can withstand those high temperatures and generally this is going to be a peel and stick rubberized asphalt product like ice and water shield that's designed for high temperatures. Sometimes you'll see the letters HT in the names of these products, which means they're suitable for high temperature applications. Guys, I hope this clears up any confusion about ice and water shield and its role in roofing. It's a great system when used correctly, but it does not prevent ice damming. It provides superior protection against water infiltration and air leakage, and can be used to enhance building durability and performance. Just make sure to pay attention to the assembly details, and make sure you aren't trapping moisture underneath that underlayment. For more information on roofing and all things building science, head over to siri-designs.com, where we have over 150 free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics. Give this video a like if you haven't already, and subscribe for more weekly building science videos. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.